In this video, I'll show you how to set up a Project Stellar mod chip for the original Xbox. Project Stellar is a very promising new mod chip for the Xbox, and I am excited to see how it continues to expand and grow upon where it is now, but even in its current state, it is a well-featured mod chip that will let you do most everything that you hope to do with an original Xbox, and if you have CPU-upgraded Xboxes, it's actually quite beneficial. Getting it set up is a little bit different than other mod chips. For this one, you need to have access to a retail 5838 BIOS to implement the Stellar OS that is built into the chip. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get that set up. So let's go ahead and dive in. So as we get started with this process, you are going to need a Project Stellar mod chip, an original Xbox, and a USB-C cable that can transfer data. Now on the software side, we are going to need a retail 5838 BIOS from a version 1.6 Xbox. So I have a video over on my channel showing you how to back up BIOS files from original Xboxes. So if you happen to have a 1.6 model lying around that is soft modded that you're hoping to install Project Stellar into, it makes it really easy. You can follow along with this video, dump that BIOS and have it all good to go. Otherwise, you are going to need to source a retail 5838 BIOS. So you're gonna to need to use something like Xbins to acquire that. Now to initiate the setup process, we're gonna head over to stellar.makemegahertz.com on our web browser. And it's gonna say, welcome to Stellar OS, connect via USB. So just go ahead and get your Project Stellar plugged into your USB port on your computing device of choice. Click on connect via USB and you should see Project Stellar show up here in stellar.makemegahertz.com wants to connect. So just tell it to connect, there we go. And so here we go, Stellar setup not complete. So you can tell it to complete setup. Now it's gonna ask you to get the 5838 BIOS, so just click on Browse File and navigate to where you have that stored. So I have mine on my desktop, Retail 5838 BIOS, extracting the kernel, and then it flashes it to the Stellar chip. And if my understanding is correct, this also updates the chip to the latest firmware version, but don't quote me on that. And there we go, Stellar OS setup is now complete. Now, before you install it, go ahead and check the firmware version that is currently installed on your chip, because if it matches the latest firmware version, you don't need to update it. So this one is already on version 1.1.2, and the latest version that is available is indeed version 1.1.2, so I'm not gonna have to update this at all, but just in case you do need to update, I will show you that process anyway. Grab the Stellar Recovery UF2 flash file, so just grab the latest version as is available when you watch this video. So to manually update the firmware on Project Stellar, you just have to connect it via USB while pressing down this button right here. So you hold down this button on the side. Let's put this down like that to make my life a little bit easier here. But yes, you hold down this button and then connect it via a USB-C cable and make sure it goes in all the way and it should pop up on your computer as a removable flash drive. You can let go of the button at that point. So now on the computer, you should see rpi-rp2. So just drag the stellar recovery.uf2 file that you downloaded earlier of the latest firmware release into it and then let it do its thing. And it's kind of slow, so just bear with it. And once it is finished flashing it, it will disconnect automatically, and it is now ready to go. You can install it into your Xbox. Now, as I am in no way a soldering expert and should not be showing anyone how to solder things, I'm just gonna refer to Make Megahertz's install guide here for uh, the actual installation of the pin header. So if you're on a version 1.0 to 1.5, it just goes in as you would normally expect of any Xbox mod chip. You install it on the LPC, and then there are the two optional ports in the back that you can also install. The LPC pin header that came with Project Stellar includes the entire LPC, so these blue ones are included, but you do need to have at least all of the red ones. So say, for example, you have another mod chip that was already installed, and it only goes up to uh, the line here. You are going to need to put in two more pin headers here, if not the full one. 
Now on 1.6 Xboxes, things are a little bit different. You have to use the included LPC rebuild kit to get the pin header installed. Now there is one more step for version 1.0 to 1.5 Xboxes, and that is to ground the dew points. So there is a little flex cable that came inside your Project Stellar kit that you attach to ground here and to the dew point here. So final pictures of what that should look like included here. Now just get Project Stellar mounted with the included screw and spacer. And there we go, it's all ready to go. And you'll know everything is working okay when you turn on the power of your Xbox, the green light on Stellar will turn on, and then the OLED will boot up with a little Xbox logo. And you can then see Project Stellar's booting up, and you'll have a prompt saying that you can uh, set up OS by pressing the start button. So go ahead and do so, so you can configure some system settings. But once you're booted up into Stellar OS, you can see your uh, basic system overview here on the front page. It tells you your CPU frequency, temperatures, fan speeds, RAM, hardware, and software revisions. And then if you have it hooked up to your network, you will get an IP address and you can actually FTP into your Xbox directly from Stellar OS, just your typical Xbox, Xbox uh, stuff there but you can head into the system menu and name your console, set system regions, languages, fan speeds, date and time should be set automatically. You can set your uh, time zones, video modes, and then audio output. So if you have surround sound and all that, you can do so here, and then manual network setup if desired. If you have an Xbox HD Plus in your system as well, you could set the system settings for that in here as well. Then under enhancements, so NTPT time lookup, that's how it sets the time automatically. You can hide the uh, press start to enter setup on the boot animation. Enable NATO 720p uh, rendering for the startup. If you don't want that, you can turn that off. Then you can set your default boot device. This is only available as IDE at the moment as of this video. And then you can set your UDMA speed. So you can just leave this on auto. It'll choose the fastest speed available for your drive. Next, we have a couple of options for CPU modded consoles, which this one is. This one is a 1.4 gigahertz modded console. So to get better game compatibility with this type of a system, you're gonna to wanna to turn on Stellar Enhanced Game Compatibility and Extended CPU Microcode. If you plan on using Insignia and previously nulled out your HDD key, make sure that option is checked as well. And then in the next update, there's going to be native ISO loading and CISO loading. So you can have those on as well but a lot of these options are not available at the moment. Networking devices, not available at this time. Tools, this is where you can uh, format new hard drives, cache partitions, remove old soft mods if you have those. It has the Insignia Setup Assistant. Then you can also back up your EEPROM. So I have a video on the channel showing you how to format new hard drives using Project Stellar already, so be sure to give that a watch. Next tab is our input devices. So this is where additional uh, drivers are going to be available to use things like Xbox 360 or Xbox One controllers on the original Xbox with a USB adapter. And then there's also the in-game shortcuts key here as well that you can enable or disable if you wanna get rid of things like in-game reset. Next up, check for updates. So you can update Project Stellar directly within Stellar OS. All you need to do is have a network cable plugged into your Xbox and it hooked up to your internet. But you can just come in here Stable or beta builds, tell it to check for updates and install updates. Next, there's the help page. So if you need help with anything, show the QR code to get help. And then a diagnostics one here as well, which is not really useful for us. But when you're all done, you can just save the settings and the box will reboot. Now, if you are using Project Stellar and you come from another version of mods, you will need to make sure that your dashboard is located in E dashboard otherwise project stellar will not boot it doesn't like shortcuts either so make sure that you are running just a default xbe file at the root of e dashboard so i have xbmc for gamers installed on this dashboard at the moment so heading into the settings here let's go in the file manager so again e dashboard default.xbe, that is the boot path for Project Stellar. 
So if you need to FTP and arrange anything on your hard drive, you can just boot into Stellar OS and do so, so that way you have a bootable system. But that pretty much covers it for Project Stellar setup. So as you can see, it's a little bit different to get set up than other mod chips, but results are quite fun. And again, I cannot wait to see where this goes in the future. There's so many interesting things in the works that have been announced for this mod chip, and it's going to be so much fun when they finally arrive. But here at the end of the video, I have a couple of favors to ask. As always, be sure to hit that like, dislike button, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Tons of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content directly to you. Big, big, big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you so much as always for believing in what we do here and helping us keep it going for so long. You are all the truest of champs and we could not do it without you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, y'all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.